at the end of the homework tonight that I want you to skip. Um, I decided to split 5-5 five, five into two logical parts. The first part is today we're going to do derivatives. Tomorrow, or not tomorrow, Monday, we'll do integrals. These are some integral problems, so again, we'll skip them tonight. We'll talk about them on Monday. A um, couple things to go over today. First of all, we're going to do a little bit of pre-calc work. Um, refreshing your memory on how to work with logs a little bit because it's been a while and you didn't like it when you did the first time. And then uh, we're going to talk about taking the derivatives of exponential functions where the base is something other than e. So we did e to the x already, and we know that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And if we have the derivative of e to the u, we have e to the u. I'm sorry? Close. What's that commonly called? You. Not me. No? It's easier than that. How do you secure your bike? Lock. Chain. Chain. It's the chain rule, right? <laughs> it's the lock rule. No. We've talked about that. Okay, so we're going to change this now where the base is not E, and we're going to make it A, where A is some other number. But before we do that, I need to refresh your memory on a couple things. How about the old change of base form? Okay, so if I have log base A, where A is something other than E, because if it was E, it would be a natural log, or it's something other than 10, because then it would just be written as log, and we want to rewrite it. Anybody remember? Log x over log a. You could do, you could, this is the nice thing about change of base. You can do whatever log you want. So if you want to do log x over log a, that's okay. Why would that be a smart log to use? Because a is the base. Not even that. Why log? Let me re-ask my question. What's the base on this log? 10. Ten. Ten. Okay, good. Why would I want to use log base 10? Why is it easy? Because it's like the, it's the go-to in like your calculator. Bingo. It's on your calculator. So I can actually calculate those numbers. There's no log base 6 on your calculator. What would be the other form that would be smart to use? That's also on your calculator. Natural, Natural log. Whoops. And I'm sure you remember that, right? A couple other things that pop up that uh, we might need. Uh, a raised to the log base A of X. What's that equal to? X, correct. A raised to the natural log of the same base. And we did that already. E raised to the natural log of x is just x because it's E and its base is natural log. Uh, let's call this 1, we'll call this 2, we'll call this 3. And the third is log base A of A to the x is also equal to x. And we use two main tools when solving uh, log problems. One is taking the log of both sides of the equation. The other one is using the raise it to a power trick. So we, when we were doing E stuff, we raised stuff to the, uh, we took E and raised it to whatever power of the equation that we're solving. We can also do that for any base other than E or 10. So for instance, uh, let's change this. There are a couple ways to solve this equation. That's not the equation, sorry. The equation is, what are we solving here? Here we go. That's what I'm trying to solve. Jump the gun, told you the answer already. <laughs> Two ways to solve it. One way is if you remember how to convert from logarithmic to exponential. I wrote the answer before. So approach number one would be to do two to the negative six is equal to x. 
and then either leave it in that form or punch it into your calculator. How else could I solve that problem? The other method's a little bizarre because I think most of you would, would remember how to convert from log to exponential. Right. Take two and raise it to like each side of the equation. Good. Do the raise two trick, but use two because that's our base. Just like we would have done if we were doing e, we would do two raised to the log base two of x is equal to two raised to the negative sixth power. 2 raised to the log base 2 of x is going to cancel x. And we end up with the same value. Two different ways. Most of the time you're going to do the first one, but sometimes when the problems get a little nastier, you might want to use the raise 2 trick. And again, you just have to remember that you're going to raise it to the base of the log that you're dealing with. Okay. We good? That's all pre-calc stuff. Let's see if we got all the pre-calc done. Yeah, we're pretty much done with the pre-calc, so let's do some calculus, shall we? We shall. Let's take the derivative of a to the u. We'll skip the whole a to the x thing because if it's x, it's a lot easier because you won't have to deal with the chain there. This one I'm going to show you where it comes from so that you can appreciate the theorem. I don't know, you don't have to write down the derivation if you want to, that's fine. But instead of just giving you formulas to memorize, which I'm not a big fan of, I'll actually show you where this comes from. In order to solve that, you need to know one thing, and that is a little theorem here. A to the x is equal to e to the x times the natural log of a. Now, where did that come from? Well, if I bring the x back up on top, I have e to the natural log of a to the x, and e to the natural log of anything is going to cancel. So I just took that a to the x and distorted it a little bit. Okay. Now what I want to do is um, I'm going to change this. Let's turn this into a u so that we can take into account the um, that being something other than x, a function, for instance. Now, take the derivative of both sides. I'm not going to do anything with the left side of this equation because that's what I'm looking for. I'm going to manipulate the right side till I can get my answer. That answer will give me the formula for taking the derivative of a to the u. So then derivative of x with e to the u natural log. It's a derivative of the right-hand side. Say that again. Look, let's back up. Hold on. What's a derivative of e to the anything? E to the anything. Okay, so we'll throw that in there. And then you said what? What am I chaining on? What's more? What's a derivative of u times the natural log of a? U over a. Mm. It will be natural. Just natural log a. Okay. Does that make sense? Think of u as our variable then. If u is the variable, if this is the natural log of x, then the derivative of the natural log, sorry, if this is the natural log of a times x, this is a number. The derivative of 2x is 2. The derivative of a number times a variable is just the number. And I have to chain on the derivative of u. Okay. That makes sense? Question? Can you explain it again? Yeah. If we take that, it's a little confusing because I bopped back and forth between x's. I probably should have left it in terms of x's. If I left it in terms of x's, then we get to this. The derivative of e to the anything is itself chained on with the derivative of the exponent. Okay? And since we're using u as our variable then, when I take the derivative of 
a variable times a number, it's just the number, so, which is where that came from. But it would just be natural log of a, and then this would be one because the chain, the derivative of x is just one. And that's why I did it in, in terms of u because it's got to be, you got to chain on derivative of u. Patrick? Why are you considering a like a number and not the variable? Because that's the basis of our problem is that we're taking functions like 2 to the x, 5 to the x, a number raised to a variable. So we've done a ton of x raised to the second power, x raised to the negative fifth power. We've had our variable always as the base. And now we're switching it and saying, oh, no, let's put the variable up on top and put the number as the base. So A is a constant. I could okay. use C, but that confuses people when we get to integrals then. So I use A. Maybe constant. I should write that down. A is a constant. Constant. Okay. Are we good now then? Yeah. I would understand if you thought that that was a variable, how that would cause problems. Now we're almost done. What's this? A to the u, very good. Why? The theorem that you showed us before. Mm -hmm. Keep going. The second one you showed us was this. A to the log, they say, of x equals x. So then. That's even easier than that. Use your log properties, bring the u up as an exponent. E, to the, e raised to the natural log of anything is anything. So this gives us a to the u times the natural log of a du. After all that work and that derivation, let me finish my sentence. What we find out is that when you take the derivative of a number raised to a variable or a function, it's itself again. So we have that itself thing again. What you need to remember, though, is you've got to stick a natural log of a in there. Okay, question. I was just going to say, isn't the answer to like the e raised to the u ln a, wasn't that given up previously already? Yeah, you could also do it. Yeah, I, I didn't even notice that. I, I did it exactly the way Oliver did it, figured out what that was, but we had that when we started. So, yeah, that's another way to handle it. So, this comes over here a to the u times the natural log of a du dx. And remember, this du dx is our chain. OK, so as an example here, let's suppose f of x is, I don't have my glasses on. You need to help me. This is so sad. What does that say? 12. I got the 12 raised to the 6 plus 3x squared. Quantity squared or 3x? 3x squared. Steve. Just the x is squared. Yes. That. Yes. Okay, good. Find f prime, please. Sucks getting old. Maybe you should yes. just stop. Huh? Maybe you should just stop yourself from getting old. Are you suggesting I commit suicide? <laughs> no, I'm just saying you're just a little too old. That's kind of harsh. <laughs> well, okay, maybe. How would I do that? Discover the fountain of youth? Exactly. Okay. Find it. Just take some time off. Or we'll have vampire. They don't age. We've got plenty of bats. I could get, have a painting painted of myself and then. Just get. That was a literary reference to Doreen Gray. Anybody? Oh, have you guys oh, read I, that? Yeah. Doreen Gray? I, I, I saw the painting as sorry. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Reading up your time. I'm to it. Portrait of Doreen Gray is a story by Oscar Wilde where the guy has a painting painted of himself and some weird, something weird happens so that the painting ages and he doesn't. As long as the painting is okay, he's okay. And then some weird stuff starts happening. Classic story. You should you should create that painting. Like old school sci-fi. It's all right, Dante's got the answer. What is it? Uh huh. Good. Do you want to explain each of those parts? 
the first part is just itself. Good. Then the second part is the natural log of the base. Uh huh. And then the third part is the derivative of u. Good. It's the chain. chain. Perfect. We're done. And there's nothing you can do to clean that up, so you just leave it like that. We're good to go. Okay. Now, what most. Are you with that? Um, it's not a stupid question. The only stupid question is a question never asked. That's um. <laughs> <laughs> like one of my teacher questions. cliches. <laughs> well, you did take I'm the derivative. I'm not real good at that, by the way. You took the derivative of the whole thing, right? Not just the derivative. Derivative of the exponent. Okay. Yeah. Derivative of 6 is 0, derivative of 3 is 4. That's my question. Okay. All right. Good. Any other questions before we move on? Okay. Then the other part is we looked at the derivative. Oh, yes. So let's go back to the derivation over here. And that's why I showed you this so you can understand. And you're probably, let's be honest, you're going to forget about this and you're just going to memorize the formula. Yeah. But where that comes from is when I, when I did this. I started by setting this up as a true statement because we already explained why this, this is equal to that. Mm -hmm. So we know that those two are equal. I'm looking for the derivative of this, so I took the derivative of both sides. This thing I didn't do anything with because that's what I'm looking for. Leave it alone, move on. So now I have to take the derivative of this. So the derivative of e to the anything is itself times the derivative of the exponent. Okay. Okay. My exponent is, or sorry, um, yeah, my variable here is actually u. Mm -hmm. And so the derivative of the natural log of a times u is just the natural log of a. Because right. natural log of a is a number of it. But then you got to chain on the, the uh, derivative of that u value. It's actually, I probably should have done it just in terms of x, but if we do it just in terms of x, we lose this guy, and that's an important part of the, of the formula. Okay. okay, anything else before I move on? Okay, last thing then we need to do is look at what happens when we want to take the derivative of a log base. So let's suppose we want to take the derivative of uh, log base a of u. I'm not going to, all right, take care. I'm not going to go through the whole derivation again. We can do the same thing. We would take a formula based on a log base, take the derivative of both sides, manipulate it, and get it down to something that we need. This one is a little bit different. We get 1 over the natural log of a with a u on the bottom and the chain on the back end. So this one gets a little bizarre. Is that the answer? Or that's it. Okay. Good answer. Are we going to have to do any simplifying with that or just leave it? Depends. Uh, most of the time it, it usually won't simplify very nicely. Occasionally when you take the chain here, it might cancel with the function in the bottom. But it's it's pretty straightforward, just like the, the other one that we did. So as an example, is that log base A raised to the U? No, that's log base A of u. Okay. So the A is the base, u is the function that we're taking the log base of. Okay. For instance. Oh, forgot this. If you have the formula under control, which you eventually you will, I mean, that's something that probably belongs on a note card or a flash card, however you're doing this. Then it's just a matter of identifying the parts. What's A in that example? Three. What's U? Four squared minus seven. Good. Then plug and chug. One over the natural log of A. A is three times the function, 4x squared minus 7x, times the derivative of that thing, 8x minus 7. Done. I mean, you could clean it up a little bit. You can, you know, 8x minus 7 over this whole other business. Okay. And you can see there's no simplifying that can happen there. Occasionally, Michael, I'll answer your question, occasionally these things will have something in common that you might be able to cancel but it's not that crucially important. 
Okay. One last example, which I know you love, is the old equation of a tangent line. Let's suppose we've got uh, the following. Log base 3 of x. Okay. I will tell you that later on in problems, I can change this quite a bit. Like, for instance, I may have just told you at x equals 27 and have you go find the y value. I might give you the y value, have you find the x value. Regardless, there's a lot of different ways that you can phrase the problem, just like you've seen this problem a lot of different times. What are the two things you need for the equation of a line? Slope, slope and point. point. I've got a point. How do I find the slope? Derivative. derivative. Okay. So pretty simple. What's the derivative of log base 3 of x? 1 over the natural log of 3 times x times 1. The chain, right? So just 1. We don't need it. Now what? Plug in. Plug in 27. So y prime at 27 would be 1 over 27 natural log of 3. That's my slope. So again, put it in point slope form. Don't manipulate it at all. y minus 3 is equal to 1 over 27 natural log, whoops, natural log of 3 times the quantity x minus 27, and we're all done. Um, if it doesn't say, I would leave it alone. If it does say approximate, but a lot of these problems they won't they won't ask you for approximate. Shouldn't we not put the twenty seven um, from the natural log because doesn't that um, go against the log properties? Still the same thing. Commutative property, you can write it either way. What? This is not in the original formula, if I go back a slide or two. Uh, in the original formula, this is not the natural log of A times U. It's the natural log of the quantity A times U. So I actually, it's my mistake. I should have written the U over here. Okay. And if you're feeling saucy, I could very well, I could bring that 27 up and be an exponent and take the natural log of 20, or 3 to the 27th. Big honking number. But I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it like that. Mandy, you had a question? Uh, yeah, none of those problems are on tonight. I took them already off. I took them off the calendar already. Oh, okay. Yeah. But they're still on the assignment sheet. So I don't know. Just a reference. How many people are using the assignment sheet? I assume the rest of you are using the Google Calendar. Yeah. Okay. So the Google Calendar is correct. The assignment sheet from. Okay. We good? Two simple formulas. Assuming, of course, that you remember the change of base form which might come up in solving some problems. Tomorrow we'll do the same thing over again, just look at integrals. Monday, right, sorry.